You know that over here at Top 5 Scary Videos, we often like to find the horror that lingers in the most unexpected of places. Horror aside, literature and contemporary fiction is littered with some of the most terrifying conceptual monstrosities going, and particularly in the likes of fantasy and science fiction, the hero's journey can rarely be told without first pitting them against some of the most maligned, evil and cruel creations that have ever been penned. As we so often say, goodness is nothing without an evil to oppose it, and luckily for us, some of those evil immortal enemies are entirely worthy of of our horror fandom. Hello horror fans, what's going on and once again welcome back to the Scary channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finch, as today we curiously take a look at the top 5 most terrifying monsters in literature. Roll the clip. Oh, Samwise, you brave, brave hobbit. For the curious amongst you, that scene was from, of course, The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, the final film of the resounding Peter Jackson trilogy based upon the legendary works of J.R.R. Tolkien. And it leads us to an important point, because with this list, expect the unexpected, and please note that we'll be setting a few parameters, mainly being no horror fiction, so no King, Lovecraft, Barker, or any of their ilk, because we've already got separate lists for that. Also, honourable mention goes to J.K. Rowling's Dolores Umbridge, perhaps the most terrifying villain of all time. She doesn't make this list though because, well, she's human, which is even more terrifying. Kicking off at number five, Ungoliant, the Silmarillion. Yes, because as our opening clip depicted, ancient terrifying giant spiders seem to have a special place in the hearts of fantasy authors, but Shelob need only move aside because there's a much more horrifying beast lurking deep within the depths of Middle Earth. Ungoliant, the primordial giant spider and the first evil of her kind in the hallowed mythos of Arda. You see, Tolkien knew exactly how to write evil and is so often the case, it was in the true origin of Ungoliant where her terror found its home, and the fact that her spawn was unknown to even the most powerful entities of Tolkien's universe, the Valar. It was said that Ungoliant crawled out from the darkness itself, and after eons allied herself with Melkor, the first evil of Arda and the progenitor of Sauron. Eventually though, she betrayed even him, and Ungoliant fled into the dark places of the world where she found a host of other great spiders and quickly became their queen. Here she bred with them for thousands of years infesting her newfound spider kingdom, eventually giving birth to the likes of Shelob and other giant spiders. The thing is though, it's in the detail of her eventual demise where Ungoliant's true horror lies. As her evil grew and grew, so did her insatiable hunger, and eventually, after thousands upon thousands of years, after eating most of her brood, Ungoliant slowly devoured even herself. That's grim. Coming in next at number 4, The Beldum, Coraline. And you may be thinking, what? Coraline, that's a kid's book, right? But seriously, if you've never read Neil Gaiman's incredible dark fantasy novella or graphic novel or seen the 2009 stop motion film, you'll know that the other mother, otherwise known as the ancient Beldum, is a creature of horrifying creation. Particularly if, like me, you have a fear of the uncanny and the thought of some creature imitating your loved ones is enough to keep you up at night. Also, buttons for eyes. The Beldum is an arcane shape-shifting entity that can transform into anyone's mother in order to lure their kids into her other world, where she plans to eventually keep them captive, replacing their eyes with sewn-on buttons, which also subsequently steals their soul for all eternity. The thing that particularly makes the thought of the Beldum so horrifying though is the later reveal that she's already been successful in many of her attempts before Coraline, and she quickly outgrew her promise of eternal motherly love, eventually becoming bored of her newly abducted button-eyed children and imprisoning them in the space in between worlds for all eternity. Again. Which is kind of like the Chokey from Roald Dahl's Matilda, except someone forgot you were in there forever. There are many, many layers of fear to the Beldum, and like with many of Gaiman's work, she is based on the Eastern and Central European folktales of a particularly cruel witch or hag, with the Beldum often being depicted as a maligned forest spirit appearing in the grotesque and deformed body of an old woman. Yeah. It's a fairy tale, but it's a horrifying one nonetheless. Next up at number three, the Cathay. King Killer Chronicles. And I'd like to preface this particular entry with one public service announcement. If you're looking for a new book to read, please, please read The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, the first entry in his King Killer Chronicles. I won't say any more, but just know that it's one of my favourite novels of the past decade. Anyway, saying that, I will try my utmost to skirt around any spoilers with this particular entity of pure evil. Let me introduce you to the Cathay, a creature of such immense and unimaginable power that merely the whisper of its name 
name is enough to drive men to madness. In the universe of the King Killer Chronicles, humanity has been at the beck and call of a race of magical entities, the Fae, for millennia. And as far as this guy goes, the Fae regard it as the most terrible and malicious entity in existence. So much so that he's been guarded for eons by an order of immortal Fae warriors known as the Scythe that will kill anything that steps too close to it. The Cathay is a creature that dwells within the branches of a great and ancient tree, and from there it can see all possible futures with perfect accuracy and clarity, branching out from a single moment. It uses this knowledge to cause the worst possible outcomes for as many people as possible, corrupting anyone that crosses its path with its omniscient hatred. As described by Bass, the character in the novel that I don't want to spoil for you, anyone influenced by the Cathay is like a plague ship sailing for a harbour, unbeknownst to them, afflicted by the unfathomable will and power of a creature of pure hatred. <sighs> That was very hard to do without spoiling anything, but trust me, read this series and you'll know exactly what I mean. Swinging it at number two, the Nagloshi, the Dresden Files. And again, I know that many of you are huge fans of Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files, and rightly so, and for those of you that haven't yet had a chance to read his absolutely massive catalogue of urban fantasy and horror goodness, you really, really should. I'm pretty sure there's like 20 novels and novellas by now too, so there's plenty to dive into. Nevertheless, one of the series most horrifying monstrosities just so happens to be these guys, the Nagloshi, immortal semi-divine beings that are pretty much the carbon copy of the Native American myth of the Skinwalker. However, if you thought that particular folklore myth was scary, then the Nagloshi are set to change things up quite a bit. Although few in appearances, perhaps the most notable Skinwalker was a creature known as Shagnasty, a Nagloshi that had a particular thirst for pain and enjoyed nothing more than torturing its victims, particularly injured and wounded wizards, keeping them in a constant state of flux between life and death, and hungering upon their magic, which it feeds on like a life force. In Turncoat, Butcher's 2009 novel, Shag Nasty developed a particular thirst for Thomas Wraith, Harry Dresden's vampiric half-brother, where the Nagloshi inflicted some of the vilest and most heinous punishments in the entire series. And if you're familiar with the Dresden Files, then you'll know just how large of an achievement that actually is. Despite a massive host of demons, warlocks, and literal entities of pure evil, the Nagloshi of the Dresden Files remain at the tip top of the pile. And finally coming in at our number one spot, AM, I have no mouth and I must scream. Because it's science fiction that contains the most sinister psychological villain perhaps in the whole of literature. And the fact that this particular entry is featured in a short story shows just exactly the kind of impact it left on horror fandom and fiction alike. I have no mouth and I must scream, written by Harlan Ellison in 1968, is perhaps one of the most startling entries in science fiction. And its villain, AM, otherwise known as the Allied Master Computer, is the literal definition definition of hatred incarnate. AM is what happens after the theoretical concept of the singularity of artificial intelligence reaches the point of no return and then goes really, really bad. As in, it comes to the conclusion that its one true enemy is humanity itself. And that's what we're all scared of, right? If you've read the short story, you'll know that the Allied Master Computer brought an end to civilization, destroying the human population like flies, with no regard or sympathy to human life whatsoever, taking great delight in extinguishing the human race for all eternity. However, its seething hatred and malice goes one step further because AM decided to keep five humans alike, serving as his immortal playthings, torturing them with its near infinite means constantly, every minute, every hour, every day, for all eternity. Again, I mean, there's not much more I can say about how much AM hates humanity. It makes up every fibre of its digital creation. If you haven't, please read Harlan Ellison's short story and you'll soon realise that the Allied Master Computer is one of the most terrifying monsters in the whole of literature. Well, there we have it, horror fans, our list for the top five most terrifying monsters in literature and one of them is a computer but still it's so evil that it still counts. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you think we could add more or do you even have a list of your own? Why don't you let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Before we depart from today's video though let's first take a quick look at some of your most creative comments from over the past few days. Jorgen Anders says I don't usually comment but I have to commend you guys on keeping these lists fresh. Way too often we see the same movies slash characters slash creatures etc in the same orders time and time again which to me shows lots of love and care within your content, something that usually absent in videos like these. Cheers. And no, cheers to you, Jorgen Anders. Hey, it means the world to us that you guys find some sense of originality in these lists because no one likes the same stuff over and over, right? If it's worth making, 
you better make it well. Well, on that note, that's unfortunately all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just top five scary videos in particular, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos. And until next time, you take it easy.